This is my review after using the Signature Music Pro double bass drum pedals for three weeks. The price on Amazon is $79.99. Now I want to start off with my experience with this pedal for the past three weeks. We're going to start off with the beaters. Now these are not really felt. They look like felt. They're actually texture like felt but they're very hard. It's a very hard material. It's not really heavy. It's medium weight but it's pretty much hard. It's not as soft as the one that you have with the Mendini drum set. The second part that I want to discuss is the beater adjustments. Well, the beater could be easily adjusted by using your drum key and just loosening or tightening the screw right here and you could adjust the distance with the height. However, there is another one that you would have to know about and this one uses an Allen wrench there is an Allen key, there's an Allen screw right here that you could tighten or loosen and you could move the beaters either left or right of the pedal. So I think it was very important for people to know that so you could have an adjustment for both of the beaters to hit closest possible to the center of the bass drum. The second, the third part is the footboard. Now this footboard right here is actually eight and a half inches in length. Now the way I, how I measured the footboard is just from here to here. I did not take into consideration that the heel plate is right here. That's just the length of the footboard itself. Now the footboard itself is not, this is not the pedal that you would want to get if you're using the swivel technique. I personally use the heel toe technique so I don't really need to worry about that but this pedal right here, it's actually these chrome parts right here are actually above the black parts. It's very grippy, it's not gonna slide. Your foot is not gonna slide off the pedal, but it's gonna bounce quite well. Now I've already measured in my previous videos that there are some spurs at the bottom right here of the pedal, which you could use it to protrude into a carpet in which you play your drums on. There are some rubber paddings at the bottom. I think I need to show you that one. Here and here. Those are the rubber paddings that keep it in place. So whenever you're playing, it doesn't move out of the position that it's in. There are some other minor adjustments that you could use the Allen wrench for. Now this connection right here that serves to hold the auxiliary pedal in place the auxiliary beater, sorry, is tightened or loosened by two Allen wrenches right here. Two Allen screws, sorry. You loosen them or tighten them with the Allen wrenches. And out of the box, it needs to be tightened because it's pretty loose. So when I got them, there was a lot of squeaky sounds. It was this area right here and this area right here that needed to be tightened using the Allen wrenches. So I think I need to point that one out. So, off with the main pedal. I'll get back to this later. The next one that I want to talk about, well, the slave pedal is actually the same thing, the auxiliary pedal. Some people prefer to use a satellite pedal. This connection rod right here. Now, there are some pros and cons with this connection rod. The pros being that it's quite good, it's very easy to use, it's very smooth. However, if, I'm not sure if I could actually point this out in the video, but there is a certain amount of play to it. If you were to look at it right here, if I could get this camera to focus, there is a certain amount of play in here. And this creates a slight delay when you're playing with your auxiliary pedal. There's a latency issue that I did find a way to fix. I'll post that in an update video but I'll leave more on that. The rod itself could be extended up to 20 inches from this end to the other end. That's it for this one. As I've mentioned before, there is an Allen screw right at the bottom here that you would tighten or loosen to move the beater either left or right. It goes the same for both of the beaters. Another adjustment that I need to mention is this one right here. This is where the spring is attached to the shaft that drives the beater. 
Now there are three screw holes that you could choose from and what that would do is either bring the beater back a bit or even more or just take it back to a medium position or back to the closest reach. I found this one to be the best. There is this part right here has two allen screws right at the inside here. This was wobbling at the time that I got it so this needs to be tightened. At the bottom here behind this screw right here you would have to take this out and there's another allen screw right in here that you need to tighten for it to not give a squeaking sound. This is the threading that you could use to tighten the hoop to the bass drum um, the clamp onto the bass drum hoop sorry and this here is the threading for the spurs. Basically the pedal is quite lag free it's pretty smooth I mean I really don't have any problem with it other than just a minor delay which I did find a way to fix so you, you see it's actually pretty smooth I'll do a sound test in the same video at the end of the video actually not a sound test just a way of how the pedal plays to know its reaction when you're playing it you can also loosen or tighten the screw right here and just bring this out or in a bit I don't know exactly why you would want to do it but it's there I don't think I missed out any adjustments so that is it for this video for the explanation part now I'll go into a play mode in which I'll play these pedals so you could see exactly how they play thank you for watching this video and I apologize for this quality of the video for this specific one I'm not really filming with any professional gear, so bear with me.